Then one of my divers had seasickness and then out of nowhere it just came out of his mouth onto all our equipment and everything. So what happened? No choice, just wear and dive for. <laughs> I'm Major Alvin Kang from the Naval Diving Unit. And I'm Second Sergeant Chua Siang Rui from the Naval Diving Unit. Today we'll be sharing more about what we do in the Naval Diving Unit. So I can start. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's so hard. So just break it, so. <laughs> Why did you join the Navy? So I came from a sporty and active background and I think the moment that I entered the Naval Diving Unit immediately felt at home uh, with the very physical lifestyle and demands of uh, the job. In terms of the job scope, there were a lot of things that resonate well with me. Most importantly, I enjoy what I do. So uh, making it a career wasn't a difficult choice. For me, uh, I'm an NSF, so I don't really get to choose my vocation. I would say when you first open the letter, you see Naval Diving Unit and Sembawang Camp. Obviously, it feels very daunting at first, but then you go through it day by day, you pass out, and then now you look back. Every time you look back on something tough, it actually wasn't as tough as you thought it would turn out to be. So do I just break it? <laughs> Food on board must taste nasty. Actually, I went on board ship once. Actually, the food quite nice, not bad. Food on board is cooked by the naval chefs, culinary trained. In terms of the standards, if I would compare to the typical uh, cookhouse. cookhouse food, it's definitely uh, a notch above, the, above that. Uh. Share with us more about the infamous Hell Week. Yeah, more fresh from it, uh, you start first. Hell Week is a series of physical activities back to back to back over a course of five days. You get maybe 45 minutes to an hour rest every night if you are lucky. Everything will be competition based between our boat levels. So in NDU, we have a saying it pays to be a winner. Whoever wins the evolution or that particular activity gets to rest a bit more. So there's another term that we call for the Hell Week. It's called the Team Building Week. Due to the limited amount of rest, the diver trainees are actually being put to their extremities. So that's where the body and the mind is being put to test. I think for me, it would be the turnout. That's how they signal the start. Everyone will be asleep and we will be very rudely awakened through the firing of uh, blanks. So you'll be woken up with a blast and like, yeah, out of nowhere. Yeah, the yeah. instructors will swarm into your room with the darkness, with the flashes, and you just need to scramble and just make sense of everything. Because we are wet, the whole five days, constantly on our feet, constantly running, constantly swimming. The sole of our feet gets very soft and overused. I think it's very common for all divers to experience foot rot in some ways or another. You see the bottom of your feet, you start to see holes, cracks. Very painful to walk on, very uncomfortable. And yet, we still have to fight because it pays to be a winner. Tell us an experience you had with a potential terrorist threat. I'm currently the operations officer in 180 Squadron and what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is the boarding ships out in the Singapore Straits check and ensure that the ships do not pose a threat to Singapore. The level of deterrence is also being presented out to the public. So there was this instance where we had intel of an illegal stowaway on board a merchant ship that was coming to Singapore. So my team was activated so as to ensure that the ship does not pose a threat to Singapore. Share with us some of the activations or missions you have attended that left an impression on you. So for F1 operation, I was tasked to be the dive supervisor of the dive team that we are, that will be searching the perimeter of the area. It was my first time and probably my only time handling a large group of people for a large scale event. The weather was not co cooperating with us. A lot of external factors. So there are more steps that I have to do instead of just what's written on the book for me to follow. So that was very memorable because I, I felt that I had to step up. For myself, it would be a fire aboard, aboard a merchant ship uh, off Singapore waters. I think it was memorable because it was a Sunday night, uh, probably like about 1 a.m. And we were, of course, being on standby, that's where we were activated on short notice. So we immediately rushed back to camp and as part of the whole of government efforts, uh, we are there to assist the ship crew in evacuating the ship. Probably because I was about to sleep. <laughs> okay. Navy officers are held to the higher secrecy. In SAF, uh, there are various levels of security classifications. Everything is on a need-to-know basis. If you are one of those who really need to work on the, the very secret, secretive stuff, then yes, you, you would then have access to such information. One incident is uh, during the 
Trump Kim Summit where there were actually a lot of efforts from the Navy. I was part of the planning cell where we had to plan for various shipboarding out at the Straits to ensure the security of that uh, area. Then I, I couldn't openly share about this. The whole international event uh, turning out as a very successful one. Of course, I, I then felt a sense of accomplishment uh, being one of the guys uh, at the back. Females are at a disadvantage being in this unit. Disadvantage, I wouldn't say so, but I would say the most common and relatable across all diver trainings will be boat PT, whereby we carry this 80 kg rubber boat above our head, extended arm carry, run up and down the field, do all sorts of exercises with the boat. Personally, after extended periods of time, the fatigue kicked in and I really felt it. So that might require extra training. But with that said, definitely I've seen females who are also uh, as strong or stronger than some guys. Mm. So actually, I think it all comes down to uh, what is the outcome. As long as they can uh, physically and mentally be performing at the same level, then I don't think they are disadvantaged in any way. What were some comments that you got when your friends and family heard that you joined the Navy? When my parents heard that I was going to sign on and make this a career, uh, they were very supportive because of the fact that I think SF career is pretty stable. They, of course, definitely were worried when they heard that I was joining the Naval Diving Unit due to the profile of it being an elite unit and the type of activities that seems to be at high risk. I think what helped was the assurance and of course there were also uh, family engagements, take a look at the work environment I'm in. Funny story would be my dad actually saw my enlistment letter before I did. I think from that day he was very excited that for oh, my son going NDU and all. So he like went to find out more, read up. He was more into it as if he's going to NS instead of me. On the other hand, on my mom, she was just she was quite laid back. But my, my parents emphasized a lot on watching out for my own safety. La. Actually my parents make fun of me. Because when I go home I just wanna noir, just wanna slack. And they'll say like go garang unit or then like tofu. So the first fit. <laughs> What's the proudest moment you have had in the Navy? Probably be our underwater graduation. Underwater graduation was more unique in the sense that not many people get to witness and even lesser people get to experience. It happens at night. We'll don our stealth set. We'll get to swim into an underwater gallery whereby our friends and relatives will sit on the other end. A bit like a sea aquarium kind of feeling. Yeah, for myself, I'm from the older generation, from the land graduation. Even though it was a land graduation, what was unique for my graduation was that the parents were all seated at the grandstand and we were actually still with the boats. Yeah, oh. so the hell is not secured yet. Then we was like, secure. Yeah, we were like running up and down the field. The family members were able to see what we were doing. One very proud moment for myself would be because I received an award. I received the Best Leader Award out of my combat diving bag and was being presented the hard hat where I had to don on and then shout a very loud who we are. <laughs> How do you deal with the psychological demands of your job? I think a lot comes down to the training. The more you do it, the more it gets normal. People have a fear of doing things for the first time. What Naval Diving Unit does is that it exposes us to these unknowns or these uh, unfamiliar situations. For myself as an individual, I think the key attitude is just to make sure that don't shy away from it and just do it. You can expect to see uh, profuse bleeding. But we do recognise that there can be that level of shock if you are being exposed to it for the first time. And sometimes also we get to see certain footages. You also get to deal with uh, some of the more realistic uh, simulated training of blood and stuff. And that's how, how it, it gets normalised. The closest to a traumatic experience would be experiencing the drowned body task. This is my first time experiencing with a dead body. I was very anxious, very nervous, a bit of fear as well because I don't know what to expect. The scene had a lot of uh, press as well, so it added like this feeling of additional stress. It's not a nice feeling to have the camera constantly on you when you're trying to do your work. Lah. On an individual note, I just choose to view it in a different manner. I think of it as I'm helping their family uh, have a closure. It makes me feel like I'm doing something good instead of a bad experience. Uh, seeing death, never gets easier um, but along the way and along the years I've developed self-coping mechanisms. There are many seniors before you mm -hmm. and like you said, uh, your, your superiors, your own officers, they are all people who have been through the same kind of situations before. Yeah. So uh, seeking their advice is definitely the, the best way to go. To join the Navy, you cannot have seasickness. I know of a lot of people that struggle with motion sickness and seasickness. There was actually once um, I was driving the dinghy 
just off Changi. The waters there tend to be more choppy. It was rocking a lot, uh, jump, the boat was jumping a lot as well. Then one of my divers had seasickness and then out of nowhere it just came out of his mouth onto all our equipment and everything. No choice, just wear and dive all. <laughs> you need to be physically fit to be an NDU diver. Imagine this, that you are donning on your fins, you are carrying a heavy scuba tank. When you're underwater, all you have is your body beside you. When you have to travel long distance underwater or you are doing work underwater, it all has a physical toll on the yep. body. So if you run out of breath very quickly, have to consume more air and mm. that reduces your diving duration, then... Poses that, a hazard. Yeah. Do you guys eat more than diet? No, I eat what I want. Just yeah. exercise afterwards. So. He's a young man, so he can say that. <laughs> Nowadays, I do watch my diet because uh, as you get older, your body's meta metabolism uh, is not as efficient. Did your younger self envision what you'd be doing today? Before enlistment, I definitely didn't expect that I would sign on to be a regular. Back then, to be honest, I was still pretty lost. I think across these 13 years, what I've experienced through is definitely out of my expectation. So to be a diver, then we further expand our necessary skill sets, uh, the free fall course, jumping out of planes, which definitely is also something that I didn't expect that I would do. And the Navy career has also given me a lot of opportunities. Having the honour to be appointed as an honorary aide de camp, to be serving in the President's office, those kind of national level event organising. Who, who can say that they have seen the President so many times? My younger self definitely did not envision myself to be in NDU. Just two years ago, I was still in school, taking major exams and everything. When NDU letter came to my house, it was kind of like a curveball to me. Now, having the chance to serve with, with NDU kind of gave me a different angle on how I look at NS. It kind of shows me the purpose of why we have to serve uh, national service because I have first-hand experience with real-life operations and everything. So now that I've gone through it, I'm more grateful that I got to experience this journey with my friends and my batch boys as well. It's really an opportunity given to us to be able to share what the Naval Diving Unit is all about, to be able to share our personal experiences. Hooyah! Thank you for watching this episode of For Real For Real. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. Bye! Bye.